Hi, I'm Brad. We are the Wanderland Travelers and we have been full-timing in our RV for four and a half years now and we just wanted to talk a little bit about our solar setup that makes boondocking so possible. Boondocking is one of our favorite things and solar really helps with that. We are currently boondocking at Magnolia Beach in Port Lavaca, Texas, one of our favorite spots. We'll link to the videos that we've made in this area at the end of the video. So we have two 160 watt panels up on the roof. They are parallel wired. Um, we have them combined up under the uh, refrigerator vent and running down through there. We've got a 30 amp solar controller that that plugs into and that connects to two 100 amp hour lithium batteries. We started out with the standard lead acid. They were brand new but they still just couldn't keep up with running the heater at night. So um, we decided to take the plunge and make the upgrade and we couldn't be happier. We also have a ground deploy that is very useful in places like the forest where the light is pretty dappled and we can move the ground deploy around to, to stay with the light. So this is our homemade jumbo ground deploy. I wasn't happy with any of the ones out there that you can buy on the market because they're about half this size, so half the wattage. Um, and they're really expensive. Now this I was able to make with two 100 watt panels, so that's 200 watts, and it was cheaper than a lot of the ground deploys out there. Each panel was about 80 bucks and maybe 40 bucks worth of extra accessories, so $200 total. The one downside is this is a little bit heavy. My wife has a little bit trouble managing it, uh, getting it out of the truck bed, um, but I just love how much power it gives us. So here's what I did to make this work. So I just installed a couple of hinges on here using uh, rivets. But let me show you the back side. I really had to grind out a lot of this to make these to make these hinges uh, squeeze in here. There's a little bit of mistakes there as well. But uh, all I had to do was take a little Dremel and cut out some pieces here with some goggles on so that I didn't get any of it in my eye. The aluminum is very malleable, very easy to work with. Put a hinge up top, hinge on the bottom, and then another hinge here for this middle leg. Um, the, the middle leg was the trickiest part because I had to, so I used this uh, like half inch um, aluminum L bracket. I used a Dremel again to cut off a little of the tip here. So I did that so that I could make it go over the lip here and that way this isn't going to be banging against this uh, the back side of this all the time and while it's traveling. And then the two on the side, I, if I did this again I would do it a little bit differently. I squeezed it together and had two layers there but that made ended up being a little bit loose here. So I would just not bother with that, leave it as is and just and just rivet it on there. Um, I did one of those on both sides and it's just super easy to set this up wherever I want. Another extra optional thing that I did was to run some of this nylon cord and I strap it up away while I'm not using it so it doesn't blow in front of the solar panel because any little obstruction will just kill your intake. So yeah, I've got these nylon cords so that I can I can uh, stake these down. It's important that you have it at the top and at the bottom. And that way, if a, a little bit of a wind picks up, th this isn't going to work in crazy winds, but in gentle winds, this is going to help keep your solar panel, your solar deploy from falling over. Now, I'll discuss the electrical a little bit, but a uh, quick disclaimer here. I am not an expert, but I, I know a little bit about it. And if you're not comfortable working with electricity, uh, then don't attempt this yourself. So for the electrical, it's, it's really simple. You just buy uh, an extension cable, a solar extension cable, basically. And the easy way to do this is just to wire them serially, which means you take the positive from one of the solar panels and you plug it into the negative of the other one. And then your extension cord, you plug negative to negative, positive to positive. That way, I just have these two wires going from the solar panels to the RV instead of four wires. It's a little bit more neat that way. 
Most new RVs already have one of these ports for plugging in a ground deploy, but ours didn't, so I had to install this. It's just a small uh, little pigtail that I bought that plugs in here, and then I put a fuse on it, and it went to the solar controller, and the solar controller goes to the battery. Now this is a second solar controller. We, we already have one for the rooftop solar, but I put in a second solar controller because these um, solar panels are mismatched with the roof. That way we can maximize our intake from, from all four solar panels. So the extension cord uh, plugs into this port, but I had to use a little adapter to make it, to make it work. This is, I think, uh, oh, I don't remember the name of this port, but this is, I think, the standard on most solar, uh, most RVs. All right, so to put it away, I just unplug this, and then I come over here, and then just make nice big loops out of this. And just trying to get everything wrangled here. Sometimes it's a little bit of a challenge. And that's that. The legs are a little bit of a unruly. unruly, but I've got these nice handles that I put on here that really make it easy. That That is a pretty key feature here. So what I did is I just got some uh, paracord and I braided it in this daisy chain pattern for to make the handle nice and comfortable and just drilled some holes and tied a knot in there. It weighs about, what, 30, 40 pounds? Maybe. But then we just take it and put it in our trailer and we put it away. If you have any questions or comments for us, please leave them below and um, please give it a thumbs up if you found it helpful. Thanks.